Hi, Morgan here for Oneinfinity, and today I'm going to show you how to make your very own brass branding iron on your Oneinfinity CNC. And a branding iron is one of those things that most woodworkers have, or at least want to have, and they can get a little pricey. But if you have a CNC, all you're looking at is some material cost and a little time. So let's get right into it. We'll start by taking a look at the design and figuring out the best way to toolpath it. I went to my local metal supplier and picked up a piece of brass that was three quarters of an inch thick, two inches wide, and I had them cut it down to six inches long. That's a little long for the shape of the Onefinity logo, so I figured I'd just cut two inches off the end after the branding iron is engraved. I opened up VCarve and imported the logo by just dragging and dropping. I scaled it down, centered the material, and joined the open vectors. Now remember, a branding iron works like a stamp, so you'll need to mirror the design so that the burned image is in the correct orientation. All right, now we have our material set up, the design in the correct orientation. Now let's start toolpathing. The first thing I'm gonna do is flatten the material to ensure that the top surface of the brass is perfectly parallel with the Z axis. And that's super important for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm not totally sure that this brass is flat. If there's even just a little bit of variation on the top surface, the design won't make contact evenly and the burnt image just won't look very good. And number two, because the design is so small, it requires engraving very fine details. So if the engraved surface isn't perfectly flat, those fine details can be affected and you'll just never get a good brand out of the iron. I have a two and a half inch diameter flattening bit, so I can take one or two passes over the whole thing by just moving straight along the X-X. I figured I'd just fire up the spindle and jog the machine manually. And look at that, beautiful mirror finish. Okay, next we'll start working on the design. I want the logo to be in a lockup, and I want to have some negative space around it so I don't accidentally burn with the edge of the brass piece. I'm going to recess the negative space in the design by an eighth of an inch. Remember, we're not engraving the actual design, we're engraving the space around the design. Since there's a decent amount of negative space, I'm going to start by clearing out the waste with a pocket tool path, running an eighth inch diameter O-flute upcut bit. I'm going to draw a rectangle around the outside edge of the material, and the pocket will remove the space around the lockup. I have the spindle speed set at 18,000 RPMs at a feed rate of just 20 inches per minute and at a depth of just 0.015 inches per pass. And that may seem awfully conservative, but because of the density of the material and the geometry of the bit, that's the best way to run it. Trust me. Next, we'll do another pocket tool path using the same bit and settings to clear all the waste inside the lockup all the negative space within the design. You'll notice that there's still some tight spaces too small for the eighth inch bit to get into. So now I'm gonna do one more pocket tool path in the same area with a 16th inch O-flute upcut bit. And all the bits I'm using in this project are from Bits and Bits. I'll put the model numbers and links to each bit in the description for you. All right, now it's starting to look like something. The last tool path we're gonna run on this side is gonna be an engraving tool path to get those fine details. I'm using a 60 degree V-bit with the spindle at 16,000 RPMs and a feed rate of 40 inches per minute. And the last tool path I'm gonna to do is gonna be on the other side. Obviously, I'm not gonna to try to handle a hot branding iron with my bare hands. So I've gotta find some way to attach it to some kind of post that I can use to press it down onto the material and keep it nice and straight. So I decided to create a hole just slightly smaller than a half inch diameter and tap the hole so I could thread in a half inch diameter machine screw. I toolpathed it with a quarter inch O-flute upcut bit for my pocket toolpath, cutting a hole 0.453 inches in diameter, 3 eighths of an inch deep. 0.453 may seem like an odd number, but in order to thread a hole for a half inch screw, that's the size it needs to be. I ran it at 80 inches per minute with the spindle at 12,000 RPMs, cutting just 1 seconds of an inch deep each pass. Okay, we have our toolpath program, so now we can save them and bring them over to the machine. I secured the brass to my wasteboard using painter's tape and CA glue and a little bit of hot glue around the edges just to be safe. I used the touch probe to zero out my X and Y on the bottom left corner, probed for Z, loaded the first tool path, and ran it. Then I switched to the 16th inch bit, probed for Z again, and ran the second tool path. That one took a little while because I took very light passes and kept my feed rate nice and slow. This is a tiny bit, so I want to be real careful not to snap it. After that, I installed a 60 degree V-bit for the last toolpath on this side. Again, probe for Z and fire at will. That one goes pretty quick because it's just hitting all the sharp corners that the 16th inch bit didn't get to. Then I flipped the piece over, put a quarter inch O-flute end mill in the spindle, probe for Z again, and ran the toolpath to cut the post hole. Finally, I used a half inch tap to thread the inside of the hole. 
I just chopped off the head with a grinder and that'll allow me to press the branding iron down into smaller parts with my drill press or use my plunge router with a half inch collet. I don't exactly have the steadiest hand, so either method's gonna help me apply nice, even pressure. I kinda just did this on a whim, so I didn't have anything dedicated to heat the branding iron, so I just threw it on my stove top. And there you have it. That's how you make your own brass branding iron on the CNC. Honestly, I was kind of intimidated by this project, but it's really not that hard. Just like anything else on the CNC, get those feeds and speeds dialed in just right, and with proper work holding and the right bits, it's a walk in the park. All right, that's it for me. As always, I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.